Sarah's servant, and Ishmael was born. That was a bad decision. It was a sinful decision. And years later, now we see the results. Verse 8, when Isaac grew up and was about to be weaned, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasion. But Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham and her Egyptian servant, Hagar, making fun of her son, Isaac. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son, but God told Abraham, do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you, for Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son because he is your son too. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food in a container of water and strapped them on Hagar's shoulders. Then he sent her away with their son, and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade of the bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die, she said, as she burst into tears. But God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying, and he lies there, as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him, for I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water contain container and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy as he grew up in the wilderness. He became a skillful, ar skillful archer, and he settled in the wilderness of Paran. His mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Egypt. So, as I said, we see here the results of Abraham's and Sarah's sin. What, is, what were the results? A dysfunctional family. We think we in 21st century Western culture have cornered the market on dysfunction, but that is not the case. You see the sin of Sarah and Abraham caused dysfunction in the lineage of Abraham. Now, God was still faithful. God promised that Abraham would have a uh, great nation as his descendants, and he promised to take care of Ishmael, Abraham's other son, and God honored his promise, and we see throughout history the lineage of the two. But there's been trouble ever since. There's been strife and division. There's been uh, discord among families and ab among nations. And it all stems back to this one incident, this one decision of Abraham and Sarah, a sinful decision. And so, folks, what we need to understand is that our choices, our decisions, while they may seem minor at the moment, can often have long lasting impacts. Now, the truth, the truth is that it's the same for both bad decisions and good decisions. We can make good decisions, good daily decisions, and years later, we can see the benefits of those good decisions. But we can also see the bad fruit of bad decisions. So let us strive each and every day to be people of integrity, to be people who strive to make wise, godly choices and to follow the will of God and not our own delights and our own desires. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you this morning and we admit that we are sinners in need of your grace. And we thank you that we have that through Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that our sin nature has been taken care of. But Lord, we struggle. We struggle with sin every single day. So help us to repent daily, confess daily, and help us to make wise choices and wise godly decisions when it comes to the things of life. And we will thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
We'll have a terrific Thursday. Until next time, and as always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.